Big cats are dangerous at the best of times, but when they're hungry, well, let's just say that you don't want to be the closest thing to them, otherwise you might just end up on the menu. Hello friends, today I'm going to tell you about the story of the Champawat tiger that killed more than 400 people. The story happened back at the start of the 20th century, when there were over 100,000 tigers roaming the wilds. Tigers are the largest of the big cats. They can grow to weigh more than 500 pounds, or 226 kilograms, have 4-inch or 10-centimeter razor-sharp canines, and are so powerful that a swipe of their paws can kill a human in one blow. As well as that, their eyes and ears are incredibly sensitive, and they can sprint as fast as a racehorse. Truly a finely tuned killer, but it was one particular tigress in India who would catch the attention and fear of people. In 1900, a series of attacks started happening in the Himalayas of western Nepal. In a Rupal village, people would quickly vanish, but despite the animal's stealth, she left a trail of blood in her wake which caused hunters to try and pursue her. Unsuccessfully, for many years, the striped killer evaded capture and continued to hunt the people of the village. Knowing that they couldn't allow the animal to continue harming the innocent civilians, the Nepalese army organized a massive patrol and forced her out of her territory. Unfortunately, while this solved the problem for the Nepalese people, it didn't stop the tigress and merely forced her to relocate, taking her dangerous ways with her. Once she had been driven over the Sarda River and across the border into India, she immediately set to terrorizing a new village. The first people to feel the tiger's wrath were the villagers of the Kumayan district, who were unprepared for the lethal and silent attacks. Terrified of the new silent killer, the villagers quickly realized just how much danger they were in. The main targets of the animal were young women and children, as they were easy prey and would often wander into the forest alone to collect firewood, food for livestock, and materials for handicrafts. This led to a huge number of people to be killed by this lethal and refined huntress. One of the most notable characteristics of the Chempawat tiger was that she only hunted during the day. Usually, a tiger would prefer to hunt at night, as it gives them greater cover when stalking their prey, and helps them to avoid any humans who might interfere with their hunt. But with people being the tigress's main meal of choice, daytime was the perfect time to prowl. Ever the cunning hunter, the tiger would sometimes travel up to 20 miles, that's 32 kilometers a day, in order to find her prey whilst also evading capture. As word got out about the vicious attacks of the man-eating animal, daily life in the villages grew to a standstill. Hearing the Bengal tigress's roars from the forest, men refused to leave their huts for work. With such a proficient killer on the loose, something had to be done to ensure the safety of the villagers. By 1907, seven years after the tigress's rampage had begun, she still remained at large, and the English government officials who were in control of colonized India at that time saw it as a massive embarrassment. Despite putting a bounty on tigers, which led to the killing of tens of thousands of them, no one was able to capture the elusive man-eater of Champawat. That's when the hunter known as Jim Corbett was approached. Jim was the son of an Irish postmaster, who had settled in the region. One of 15 children, Jim was born and raised in the hills of Kumeon, and he spent his formative years tracking animals alongside indigenous hunters in the jungle. He even killed his first leopard when he was only 10 years old. A master tracker and an expert marksman, Jim could imitate the grunts of a leopard or the chuffling of a tiger with scary accuracy. The local commissioner would often turn to the hunter for insight, but this was the biggest thing that he had asked of him yet. He wanted Jim to kill the Champawat tiger, and although he had never gone after a man-eating beast before, the Irishman agreed to try. It wasn't long before word reached him of another attack. Sixty miles away, in a rural village, a woman had been gathering leaves from a tree when she was ripped out of it and dragged into the surrounding jungle. Wasting no time, Jim set off for the village immediately with a team of six natives to help him with his task. 
After a few days' hike, he arrived only to find the villagers in a state of abject terror, and unwilling to leave their homes in fear of meeting the same grisly fate. He spent the next few days tracking the tigress from dusk to dawn, but the trail went cold. It seemed the huntress had moved on. But where would she strike next? At the suggestion of the villagers, Jim headed to the nearby village of Champawat, which had been a site for numerous attacks. Sure enough, not long after he had arrived, the tiger made another kill. This time it was a 16-year-old girl. With a fresh trail to help him find the man-eater, Jim quickly got to tracking. He eventually found the girl, but unfortunately it was too late. As he examined the remains, an ominous feeling overcame him. Within a moment, the tiger charged out of the surrounding brush and straight at the unaware hunter. It was only due to his quick thinking that he managed to fire off two bullets towards the beast that scared her off. Scared at such a close brush with death, Jim realized exactly what it meant to hunt a man-eater. With no fear of humans, these animals were an entirely different class of dangerous. The next morning, the hunter rallied 300 villagers to walk the ravine where the huntress had made her den. They fired rifles, pounded drums, and screamed as loud as they could in order to scare the tiger out of hiding. Meanwhile, Jim Corbett lay as still as a statue at the mouth of the gorge, waiting with his rifle for the beast to make her appearance. He knew that he would only have seconds to take his shot at a target moving at lightning speed. He also knew that to miss would mean almost certain death. Suddenly, it appeared. A striped apparition, too fleet to be real, erupting from the shadows, the hunter wrote. Seeing his opportunity, the Irishman shot and missed. Having caught the beast's attention, she began to charge at him. Corbett fired a second and third shot, which both found their marks. But the enraged cat kept coming, and the hunter was out of bullets. Knowing that every second he wasted brought death closer, Corbett sprinted across the valley to grab a shotgun from a villager. He then ran back, and with only 20 feet or 6 meters between them, leveled a shot at the tigress. Finally, after seven long years, and with over 400 victims to her name, the Champawat's campaign of terror and carnage came to an end. But what had made this animal come to rely on hunting humans for her source of food? There were a number of factors. One was the loss of habitat. The once abundant grasslands and forests were significantly reduced by the ruling colonial government for farmland and timber. Of course, with the loss of habitat also came the loss of prey. This was another key factor that led to the tiger hunting people. Finally, the most significant factor to the animal's behavior was because of a hidden wound. Before the Champawat tigress started her reign of terror, it seemed a hunter had tried to kill her. They were unsuccessful in their attempt, but they did manage to shatter the cat's upper and lower right canines, leaving it unable to defend its territory and forced to find other sources of food. Unfortunately, in this instance, these became humans. After vanquishing the infamous killer, Corbett became the go-to hunter for tracking the man-eaters that struck in decades that followed. From marauding leopards to the Thok man-eater, the last tiger that he dealt with at the age of 63. Corbett was renowned for his skills. Unfortunately, in the decades after dealing with the Champawat beast, the number of tigers in India plummeted. And whilst the Irishman was the most well-known hunter of these animals, he was also a lifelong lover of Indian wildlife. Appalled by the decline of these majestic animals, the legendary hunter became the animal's most dedicated conservationist. He spent the last two decades of his life advocating for their protection until his death in 1955. Even though tigers are extremely dangerous, it's only very rarely that one actually turns to hunting humans, and with only around 4,000 left in the wild, they need our help more than ever now to ensure that these beautiful and majestic creatures don't disappear from the world forever. If you liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and join me next time for more inspiring stories.